Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about T helper cells. Now T helper cells are important component of our immune system. If we think our immune system to be a defense system of a country, then these T helper cells would be considered as the land troopers or an army ranger. So let us talk about what are the important functions of T helper cell, how they are developed and what is the consequence, how they are matured and how they are important for the immune system. And this video is pretty much detailed, so look at the timestamps in the description for a better understanding. But please stay tuned till the end of this video. T cells are born in the bone marrow from the lymphoid progenitor. The lymphoid progenitor gives rise to T cell precursor and the B cell precursor. Eventually, the T cell precursor would be secreted in the bloodstream and they would eventually migrate towards the thymus, where the further steps of T cell development would occur. But before going to that, let me tell you that T cells take very important steps towards immunity. They interact with antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells and that ensures T cells should be activated upon any kind of infections. And the activated T cells further do important job. For example, activated T cells can activate B cells. Now when B cell is activated, it forms or it differentiates into plasma cells. Plasma cells are secretion factory for antibodies. Thus, humoral immune response is indirectly uh, indirectly augmented by T cell activity or T helper cell activity. Now there are several subtypes of T helper cells. These subtype of T helper cells have their individual functions. Some of them are very helpful to combat viruses. One T cell subtype known as TH1 subtype, they help to combat viruses. In other words, these subtype of T cells are crucial for immune responses. Another subtype, T regulatory cell, is very important and work like a brick on immune responses. It prevents the activity of macrophages or several innate and adaptive immune components and thereby ensures that our body does not have a harmful effect of hyperactivation of the immune system and it decreases the probability of autoimmune diseases. Now let us understand the overall uh, developmental scheme of T cells because T helper cells are developed in different places and they are residing later on in different places so it is pretty confusing if we don't have a road map to it. So the development starts at bone marrow where we have T cell precursor which is eventually formed which is actually formed from the lymphoid progenitor cells. Now in the bone from the bone marrow they migrate towards the thymus. In the thymus the T helper cell subtype specification take place and then they move out to lymph node. So lymph node is their posting ground. Now in lymph node they interact with antigen presenting cells and thereby gets activated. They can also get differentiated into several subtypes such as Th1, Th2, Th17 cells. So in short, the birthplace of the T cells are bone marrow, whereas the training school where their lineage commitment happens or whether their antigen determining training is happening is actually the thymus. And their differentiation is taking place in the lymph node. So all of this is very important to understand the function and the developmental scheme of T helper cells. So let us try to uh, understand this process in details. So the part of T cell development takes place in thymus. So they are born in the bone marrow but eventually they move into the thymus as if thymus is a training school for the T cells. So if we take a cross section of the thymus and try to understand the detailed structure then we can understand the T cell development inside the thymus. So look at this structure right now in the cross section of a thymus. This looks like this picture and we have several anatomical zones such as subcapsular region, cortex, corticomedullary junction and eventually the medulla. Now the naive T cell, the immature T cells come inside the thymus from high endothelial venule and from there they eventually migrate towards the subcapsular region to the, towards the periphery where they increase in number and they proliferate. At this stage, they have a different name. But from after they proliferate, they eventually move towards the cortex. From cortex, they move towards medulla, corticomedullary junction, 
and once they reach the medulla by that time they are already their subtypes are specified so let us understand this chronology in bit more details so in the subcapsular region the t cells that are present there are known as double negative this is a life time life phase of the t cell so these are not different type of t cells this is kind of a life stage okay now these double negative t cells they don't have cd4 they don't have cd8 co-receptors neither of them now they have the t cell receptor alpha beta t cell receptor or gamma delta t cell receptor actually the stage is further divided into few many steps like dn1 dn2 these are transition states so we don't focus on that too much but next step they move towards cortex and now they would be known as the double positive stage because they have also cd4 co-receptor and the cd8 co-receptor both the receptors are present and 80 percent of the cells are actually double positive now this double positive interacts with the thymocytes where they get very important training which is important for their maturation now in the thymocytes they learn how to recognize antigens which are bound to mhc molecules and two distinct selection process occurs in their lifespan one is positive selection they have to learn how to recognize mhc if they fail to recognize they would be eliminated and negative selection so you have to learn to recognize otherwise you would be eliminated now this positive selection and negative selection ensures that only few of these t cells can move towards the next round of selection so th there is a stringency now in the positive selection only the t cells that are passed in this positive selection who learn how to recognize mhc molecules they would be kind of um promoted towards next level or otherwise they would be neglected and they would be dead so this is called death by neglect mostly 90 percent of the cells are dying due to this kind of process so very less amount of cells are actually maturing then in the next round of selection process if you have a low affinity interaction then you can go to the next round but if your interaction is too high then the body would think it's a danger these kind of t cells might lead to autoimmune responses so that is why these cells would be death dead by apoptosis now these double positive cells when moved to corticomedullary junction they learn how to recognize antigens from class 1 mhc or class 2 mhc now if they recognize the antigens from class 2 mhc they would down regulate cd8 expression whereas up regulate cd4 expression they would eventually become a t helper cell so we understand how t helper cells are specified now if they recognize class 1 mhc bound antigens then they would eventually become a t cytotoxic cell they would down regulate cd4 whereas up regulate cd8 point to be noted if they don't regulate anything they would be dead but if they regulate both of class 1 mhc and class 2 mhc bound peptides then also they would be dead and it would be considered as a danger signal so they would be dead now naive t cells which are cd4 type c t cells they have to recognize antigens from mhc uh, two type of peptides now mhc2 bound peptides are actually presented to the naive helper t cells now notice the term naive written in red naive means they have the certificate to recognize antigens but they have not done it in their real life so they have not encountered any pathogen per se so these are known as naive t cells but they would eventually meet the pathogen when they are posted to the lymph nodes now naive t cells can be differentiated into naive cd8 positive cd4 positive t cells or t helper cells can be differentiated into subpopulations such as th1 cell th17 cells t regulatory cells or th2 cells and each of these differentiation process is dependent upon specific polarizing cytokine coming from various sources 
Now, all of these subpopulations have their distinct function. For example, Th1 cell is mainly involved against viral responses or against intracellular pathogens. It is also in, involved in inflammatory processes. Th7 helps to combat fungal infections and bacterial infections. Whereas T regulatory cells work like a brick in the immune response and it prevents hyperactivation of the immune system. Th2 cells protects against extracellular pathogens and particularly it is involved in allergic responses. So we understand that even in under T helper cell, there are so many subtypes depending upon what type of cytokines they are encountering, they are further specified into subpopulation and subtypes, each having distinct function. Now, let me tell you that T cells are very much important for body's immune system. And in disease like HIV AIDS, your CD4 positive helper T cells are dead. So the HIV virus interacts with the CD4 positive helper T cells and they infect these CD4 helper T cells and while proliferating inside these T helper cells, eventually they kill the T helper cells and the number of T helper cells reduce dramatically in the body. As a result, severe immunodeficiency occurs and the risk of secondary infection increases several fold. Also, the understanding that T helper cell is very important for body's immune system came from the analysis of nude mouse. Nude mouse was a laboratory strain of mice which, have, which don't have the thymus. So when thymus was absent, then the T helper cell cannot be produced. As a result, what happens? This mouse becomes severely immunocompromised. So in this video, if you try to summarize, we have looked at the detailed developmental scheme of T helper cell functions of the T helper cell and how T H or T helper cell differentiate into specific subpopulation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.